Before we begin, you know the drill. YouTube is weird, it keeps unsubscribing people and not pushing out videos when we post them. So, if you want to stay up to date with all the nonsense that I do here, consider subscribing and turning notifications on. Also, as with the last ranking video, please do leave your unpopular opinions about Season 7 in the comments below. Alrighty, let's continue righting the wrongs of the past with the ranking of the Season 7 queens based on their track records. I mean, obviously I'm kidding when I say that we're righting any wrongs, but we need an intro because why not? And this is the point system in place, let's begin. Starting with the last 14th place, we have, as always, the first eliminated queen of the season, Tempest Du Jour, with zero points per episode. There's not much to say about Tempest when it comes to her stint on Drag Race, as whichever challenge that she was in, she or her partner got eliminated in it. But I must say that her social media is very fun, so check her out if you have not. In the 13th place is the second eliminated queen of the season, Sasha Bell, with one point per episode. Yeah, I know that her drag name is not Sasha Bell anymore, but on season 7, that was her drag name. It's not like I'm dead naming her or something, like let's calm down, you misunderstood the assignment. I feel like by now Sasha is way more known for her auto drag related look, but also the legendary Sasha Bell's drag race that's now in its 75th season. The queens in the 12th and 11th spot have the same PP score and no mini challenge wins, and were equal times better or worse than the other. But because one of them spent more time in the competition than the other, so she had more chances of redeeming herself, and she still didn't do it, Candy Ho is in the 12th place. Her PP score is 1.6 recurring. Candy, alongside Jaden, of course, has my favorite lip sync of the season, and it's the lip sync to Break Free, which Candy lost. If it had been her first or her second time in the bottom two, I fully see a double shanté happening, because she and Jaden are that good. In the 11th place is Jasmine Masters. Now, I'll be honest, I don't get it. I just don't get the fascination with her. However, I must say that how the fans treated her during season 7 was absolutely awful, and it showed that, yeah, absolutely, a US TV show with a predominantly US audience has a racist fan base. Who would have ever thought? Though, honestly, they probably hated her too because she fully has a six pack, which is, again, something that like 90% of the United States could only dream about. Either way, stand Jasmine and get a job if you hate her. In the 10th place, three spots below her original placement, is Miss Fame, with a 2.3 recurring PP score. Now, Fame is one of my favorite characters of season 7. She's so visually stunning and put together, but then you see that she's just a whole goofball that doesn't take herself too seriously. She's very endearing and very likable, and it's very enjoyable to watch her on the season. Not so much in the challenges, but that was kind of the problem for the entire season. Every single challenge but the first, the last, and the snatch game were group challenges that did not put an emphasis on visual presentation. But then, the season had many look queens, you know, seamstresses, designers, models, and such. Miss Fame being one of them, you know, she would have killed it on a season 3-esque season. In the ninth spot is the winner of All Stars 3, Trixie Mattel. Yeah, she's also three placements below her ultimate placement of the season, because, you know, she's the queen that was brought back this season. And Trixie has the same PP score as another queen on season 7, but because Trixie won too many challenges during the season, she is below her. And the queen in question is Jaden Dior Fierce. Now, for me, Jaden falls into this category that Monique Hart and Alyssa Edwards fall into, so she's this energetic, fun, mostly positive, and very animated, and so their personalities make the seasons almost unwatchable and overwhelming if I'm binging them, but watching one episode a week is the only way I can take them and appreciate them, and I do. But seriously, I do like Jaden, she's really fun, and I liked a fair amount of her looks, and I'm still looking at the ways I can sue Michelle Visage for calling her looks cheap or not as glamorous as some of the other looks on the Dead Becomes Her runway. Uh, Jaden was a prisoner that died while escaping the prison. What about that is supposed to be glamorous? <laughs> Stan Jaden, honestly. In the seventh place is Pearl. Yeah, Pearl joins Jujubee and 
Cameron Michaels, I think, as queens that were the top three of their seasons, but have a PPU score below three. Listen, Pearl got as far as she did only because she was very easy on the eyes and because of her whole storyline with RuPaul and Trixie. There is literally no valid counter arguments to this. I like Pearl off the show. It's somewhat hard to actually enjoy her on Drag Race because all you're doing while watching her is scratching your head wondering what kind of an ass pool they're gonna do to save her that episode. In the sixth place is one of my favorite queens of the season, who placed whole five places above her original placement, Mrs. Kasha Davis. A legend, a talented legend, mistreated to no end, eliminated only because she slightly mispronounced a word. Follow her on Twitter if you don't already, she's a ball of wholesomeness. In the fifth place is someone that many believe is the robbed queen of the season, Max. I've already done a whole video on how Max was screwed over in season 7 last year, so check that out if you haven't already. You'll be severely annoyed after it. Now do I say that because of how horrible my videos are in general, or because of how poorly Max was treated, but who can never be sure? The queens in the third and fourth place have the same PB score, the same amount of mini challenge wins, and they were equal times better or worse than the other. Furthermore, they competed in the same amount of episodes, but since one of those queens won the season and the other was a miscongeniality, Katya is in fourth place here and Violet is in the third. Yeah, much like BB on season one, the winner of the season statistically is the third best contestant. However, and as I have already mentioned when it came to Miss Fame, Violet was cast on a season that did not have diverse challenges, and the two challenges that were up her alley, she ended up winning. So her somewhat mediocre run of the show as a winner is not her fault. By the way, I on purpose didn't say anything on Katya, so that a plethora of you can comment, oh my god, why did you skip Katya? In the second place is Kennedy Davenport! I'm sorry to my neighbors that just had to hear that. Now my thing with Kennedy is that I absolutely adore her. <laughs> She's a great performer, she most of the time has good looks, she's really funny, she doesn't take herself seriously, she doesn't come off as fake, and so on and so on. But, and there is a but, I will always have problems with the fact that she still, to this day, refers to herself as a female impersonator, and at times has a very uniform way of looking at drag. Like, I just find it a little iffy, even though I know that she has no ill intentions with it. And back to the topic at hand, Kennedy was robbed of her top 3 spot, debate literally nobody, as this is the truth. And in the first place is, of course, the legend herself, the queen that, like, everyone thought was going to win season 7, and the one that would have broken the tradition of lip-syncing more than once and not winning, Ginger Minge. If anybody even mentions Priyanka on Drag Race Canada, I just need to remind you that it's a spin-off, not judged by RuPaul or Michelle, you know, the main judges, and that's also not produced by the producers of Drag Race Drag Race. It may have the same name and similar challenges, but it's not judged or run by the same people. So no, it does not count. Ginger's PP score is 3.72 recurring. On season 7, there are only 3 or 4 episodes where Ginger did not have the highest score. So she had the best PP score and she was on the top of the competition the most times and she still did not win. Regardless of the fact, she made season 7, for me at least, very enjoyable, and I'm a fan of hers, and honestly, I hope you are too. The biggest winner of the season is Mrs. Kasha Davis, who placed 5 spots above her original placement. The biggest loser is Pearl, who placed 4 spots below her original placement in the top 3. And now let's go over the notes. Episode 1. The high queens for the Naked Runway, but also the Spring Autumn Runway, are Miss Fame and Kennedy Davenport, while the low queens are Sasha Bell and Jasmine Masters. Episode 2 for the Glamazonian Airways episode. Firstly, Ginger and Trixie are the winners of the mini challenge, which is why their scores are colored blue. The high queens are Violet and Kasha, while the low queen is Miss Fame. Episode 3, so when it comes to the Shakespeare episode, Max's team is high, the safe queens are Katya and Candy, and the low queens are Pearl and Violet. Episode 4, the high queens for the parody challenge thing are Jaden and Katya. There are kind of two tiers of the same queens, safe leaning more towards the high in Ginger and Miss Fame, and then the safe leaning more towards low in Violet and Mrs. Kasha Davis. Max and Candy are low. 
By the way, I know that we could consider Fame and Ginger as high as well, as they were amongst the five that were called safe first, but Jaden, Katya, and Kennedy were picked as the top three, or rather the three high queens of the week, so I can't really give Ginger and Fame the high placements. Again, I need to remind you that we're looking at the critiques and trying to establish a pattern with the placements. Episode 5 for the, Des for the Despia Awards, Jaden and Kennedy are high, Ginger and Katya are safe, and Miss Fame and Violet are low. Episode 6. Ginger's team is the winning team in the Rue Hollywood Stories thing. I don't know, what was the name? So Ginger and Kennedy are high. Max and Pearl are the safe queens, whereas Violet and Fame are low. Episode 7, the Snatch Game episode. Katya is the high queen and Miss Fame is low. Episode 8, the Conjoint Wins Challenge, Miss Fame is the low queen, Kennedy is safe, and Katya is high, yet again. Violet, based on her critiques, is safe as well, though she could have easily been low too had Michelle not lost her mind over Max, looking, well, exactly the same way as he always does. Trixie does not get points in this episode as she's not in the competition and her performance does not affect the competition, as in, because of her, nobody got eliminated. Episode 9, my favorite episode of Drag Race, the John Waters episode. Violet here is of course low, and this also seems to be a recurring thing this season. Trixie gets the safe placement as she got the worst critiques out of the two good groups, and Kennedy and Katya are high. Episode 10, the Dancing Queens episode. Now, I love this episode's challenge, by the way. As they were judged in pairs, Kennedy and Pearl were the ones in the middle, so they were the safe ones. And episode 11, Ginger is high for the Hello Kitty challenge, and Pearl is safe, as Ginger got more positive critiques. And that's it. That's the video. There isn't anything else I need to say, so like, thanks for watching. Oh my god, also yeah, today is Christmas for some people, so yeah, Merry Christmas, I guess.